Now, all of this leads me to ask the question, should India be changing its stand now on this war where clearly the Russians are the aggressors? Should the stand be based on principles or pragmatism given our strong friendship with the Russians? Are Western nations guilty of hypocrisy when it comes to conflicts? Some of the questions I will raise today, should we be changing our stand is the principal one. Is it time to take sides? Kaval Sibyl, former Foreign Secretary, Government of India, has also been ambassador to Russia. K.C. Singh, former Secretary, Ministry of External Affairs. Michael Kugelman, Asia Program Deputy Director and Senior Associate for South Asia at the Wilson Center joining us. Thank you all very much for joining us. Mr. Sibyl, why don't you take that? Do you believe that the time has come for India not to sit on the fence, that we've got to, in some way, take a stronger stand, perhaps, given the nature of the Russian aggression, threats now even to civilian populations? Well, first of all, uh, you have to understand why the entire <clears throat> war has occurred. Mm -hmm. And to say that the war began simply in the last few days is absolutely wrong. The whole situation has been simmering uh, since the breakup of the Soviet Union mm -hmm. and became even more difficult to handle when NATO kept expanding relentlessly towards the border of Russia and in 2008 uh, opened the doors for the membership of uh, NATO to Ukraine. Mm -hmm. And this is this was over the head of uh, Russian uh, protests. Mm -hmm. uh, and then, of course, we, there is this whole situation between Western and Eastern Ukraine, the mm -hmm. ethnic differences, the linguistic differences. Uh, Germany and France tried to uh, broker a compromise. There were the Minsk agreements, but these have not been implemented. Seven years have passed since the Minsk agreements. There have been a lot of civilian casualties in the Donbass area. Forget who's responsible for what, for what, but the situation on the ground has been extremely difficult for the civilian population. Does that justify? No, no. And finally, but does that Putin, justify? Putin offered, but, but sorry, Mr. Sibar, does that justify uh, the nature of the aggression taking place at the moment? Shouldn't uh, India take a stronger stand and say we can but, un but, unacceptable but, but aggression? Should we totally ignore what the West has done all these years? Mm -hmm. Why couldn't they just have? Uh, why couldn't they just have agreed not to make Ukraine a member of NATO? What was so difficult? Mm -hmm. Finland is not a member. Sweden is not a member. Switzerland is not a member. So what's so special about Ukraine? Mm -hmm. The whole idea has been to weaken Russia geopolitically, corner Russia, isolate it uh, from Europe, uh, and uh, try and make the. The Russian geopolitical situation in Europe and its security situation right. very difficult. And Putin has waited 21 years. It's not as if uh, he started this thing yesterday. I'm not saying that it justified what he's done. Mm. What I mean is that we have to take into consideration the, the complexity okay. and the entirety of the situation, which therefore demands Let that we do not take sides because the responsibility is shared by both sides. And now you see what's happening. Germany is sending an arm, Netherlands is sending his arm, US is sending his arm, UK is sending sending arm. What do they want? To try and uh, try and fuel the fires in Ukraine and who will pay the price for this? The Ukrainian Ukrainian population, Let not the United States, which is sitting far away. In fact, they're going to gain a lot from this crisis, even economically. It's Europe that's going to suffer. Okay, the Ukrainian me. people that's going to suffer. This war is very unpopular in Russia. I can tell you, because there are so many Ukrainians in Russia, there are so many Russians in Ukrainians, they don't want this war. war. But this war is being pushed in order to, to, to bog down Russia mm -hmm. in Ukraine. And that's the whole idea of sending Stinger missiles and, and, and Javelin anti-tank weapons and everything I, else to do another Afghanistan on Russia. Let, so there is let, terrible let, geopolitics let Michael, at, play you, at made, the cost of people. You, you made a lot, you've made a number of strong points. Let Michael Kugelman respond that uh, from what Kaval Sibbal is suggesting, uh, he seems to suggest that Mr. Putin has been cornered by uh, Michael Kugelman by the West over these years. Uh, promises have been broken. NATO has encircled Russia. Uh, and therefore, you've got to see the context in which this aggression is taking place. And that's one reason, among others, why India can't be seen to be taking sides. Yeah, so certainly it's important to recognize Russia's position. But uh, there are better ways to express your unhappiness about an expanding alliance other than invading a country that does not belong to that alliance and that is not going to be joining it anytime soon, mm -hmm. uh, if at all, even though NATO wants Ukraine to join. Now look, 
I think that it makes sense for India to take a stronger position, mm -hmm. and not for reasons of promoting uh, democracy or this idea of a rules-based order or any other type of moral or value-based factor, but I'd argue that it's, it behooves India to take a stronger position against this war for its own interests. Mm -hmm. Cold, hard interests drive international relations, not values or morals. Mm -hmm. you know, this war is going to drive Russia into China's arms which will make it dependent on China and give Beijing leverage over Russia. And this, I think, could prompt China to pressure Russia to stop selling arms to India or to accelerate its growing relationship with Pakistan. And I think that you know a closer Russia and China means it'll make it more difficult for India to view or, or, or want to see Russia as a balancer to, mm -hmm. to China. And I think that the other, the other issue here is that the U.S. could find itself looking at Russia, not China, as its chief strategic threat. And that could have implications for this Indo-Pacific policy, which is meant to counter China. And of course, this is something that's very important and that India supports. So my bottom line is I think it makes sound strategic sense for India to take the side of those that oppose a war that could deliver damaging blows to uh, New Delhi's nat national interests. Very interesting. You seem to suggest it may well be in India's national interest at a moment like this uh, to send out a stronger signal to Russia. Casey Singh, where do you stand? Should India be sitting on the fence or it's, is it time to get off the fence and maybe make a strong point? Michael Kugelman suggesting it's in India's national interest actually not to allow this Russia-China axis to further develop if Russia gets isolated. Look, I don't buy this argument that it's NATO and because NATO was getting extended, so Master Putin got very upset. Well, Master Putin has been upset since 2014, mm -hmm. which is when a president here who was dis distinctly pro-Russia was overthrown by popular protest. Now, you can't make out the argument every time people of a country protest. Mm -hmm. It is the West that is getting them to protest. We just saw the Russians go into Kazakhstan and put her, uh, an uprising down. Mm -hmm. uh, now... Putin went and grabbed Crimea immediately after that president was deposed. Mm -hmm. And then he sent in uh, uh, people without uniforms, out of uniforms, into the two eastern provinces and de facto annexed parts of them. So this has been going on for a long time. So decision on the part of NATO that they would extend or they would uh, welcome an application from Ukraine mm -hmm. was seven or eight years ago, but they haven't moved on that. And the way to settle these political differences, particularly when there's a nuclear weapon state, a permanent member of the Security Council. It can't be done in complete breach of the charter they have signed. No, but should, uh, India, should, India, should India, given its special relationship with Russia, given the fact that this is a historical relationship, given the fact that they remain our key defense uh, partner, should we be abandoning Russia at a time like this? I think Russia had already moved away. Who was in Moscow the day the attack began? It was Imran Khan. So they've been talking to Pakistan mm -hmm. and they're much closer, as Mr. Kugelman said, to the Chinese. Mm -hmm. And they will start, they'll keep moving in that direction as the sanctions come. I think we have to take a call. Mm -hmm. Are we moving into the, look, even during the non-aligned period, mm -hmm. we had a tilt towards the Soviets. I think a tilt has to be towards the West. Mm -hmm. They know two ways about it. We, we remain, uh, we retain a balanced approach. Mm -hmm. uh, we can say that... Uh, uh, you know, please don't push Soviet, uh, don't push Russia. By the same time, we can't endorse this kind of an action mm -hmm. that you come into any country. Tomorrow, Chinese will walk into Bhutan mm -hmm. or they'll walk into Nepal. Mm -hmm. The principle of not breaching the territorial integrity of a nation, of a multi-ethnic nation, whatever your differences, mm -hmm. uh, can't, can't be accepted. Let and certainly India as a major democracy can't accept it. Let Otherwise, it devalues India as a global, rising global power. Let, let me just get Kaval Sibal to respond. Mr. Sibal, a quick show, uh, response to what you just heard. You cannot have the territorial integrity of a nation being devalued. It's happening today in Ukraine. God forbid it will happen to us tomorrow. And no one will come then to help us. Is one argument being look, made look, look, as to why we must take a stand. <laughs> look, uh, people have short memories. Uh, what happened to Yugoslavia? Mm -hmm. What happened to Serbia's territorial integrity when the West, contrary to UN resolutions, mm -hmm. accepted the independence of Kosovo? What about Iraq, Syria, Libya? All the regime changes that were done, which caused huge misery. Mm -hmm. I think we, we should make Mr. Kugelman the national security advisor of India. Who has built up China? United mm -hmm. States has built up China. U.S. allies have built up China. They made it into a monster. And now <clears throat> they're croaking that India should somehow 
uh, bear the burden of this terrible geopolitical mistakes that the West has committed. Mm -hmm. And and hasn't the West sat on the fence? On the fence, Pakistan even today mm -hmm. is United States' major non-NATO ally. Mm -hmm. They have handed over Afghanistan to the Pakistan uh, Taliban duo. Have they uttered? Has Biden uttered a single word on Chinese aggression so, uh, against India? Have they taken sides? So you're have you're in a way say, you're in a way saying that. Uh, no, that they given, sit on the fence. They that, sit on the fence, but they, they you're give saying, moral lectures to us. You're that saying that the West the sits on the fence when it suits them and gives moral lectures to us, Mr. Kugelman. Absolutely. Mr. Kugelman, Absolutely. you know, that is one re explanation that I hear from Indians. It's real politique for us, therefore, at this moment, not to take sides in a war that we didn't start. Because we don't know where this war, what the end game is going to be. So before the end game, a country like India cannot afford to take sides in this battle. Well, certainly. Uh, the West is, of course, uh, hypocritical. Most countries are hypocritical. The U.S. is hypocritical. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. But, you know, going back to my point before, you know, this is a war. Mm -hmm. First of all, this is this is probably Russia's most egregious aggression uh, that it's committed since the end of the Cold War. Mm -hmm. You know, it's one that has even raised fears, even if remote, of some type of possibility of a nuclear conflict, mm -hmm. given what President Putin did the other day. Um, to put a strategic deterrent nuclear forces on a uh, on a higher level mm -hmm. This is a major war and it could be expanded to something more serious So this is much different from what we had in 2014 with the annexation of Crimea bad as that was mm -hmm. This is a whole other different order of magnitude mm -hmm. um, And for India to continue to just you know, stay quiet sit it out I completely understand its reasoning given its relationship with Russia mm -hmm. Russia has always been India's most reliant partner all of that but India risks being an outlier, uh, one of the very few countries in the world not to criticize or condemn Russia. And I think that that just is not a good look for a country that wants to be seen working closely with global partners and not being at odds with or isolated from it. So I think that this this situation is so much different from what India has experienced in the past when it stayed mum or stayed quiet uh, mm -hmm. about these Russian, uh, uh, these Russian aggressions. I don't think the issue of Western hypocrisy should be something that should be used as a justification for India to, to stay out. Again, this war in Ukraine could damage Indian interests. So mm -hmm. it's a war that would be, one would think that at least it would be worth India trying to privately, gently pressing Russia to try to de-escalate. Now, would Russia listen if India tried to do that? Not necessarily, mm -hmm. but I think it is important to send that message for one of Russia's closest friends, one of its oldest friends, mm -hmm. to be the country that gets out there and presses Russia to de-escalate. It would send a very important message, even if it's not successful. Mr. Sibal, shouldn't at least India send out a much stronger message to Russia that while we have this friendship with you, for the very reason that we are friends, Friends cannot coexist with this kind of violent activities against civilians. I so mean, then you know, what happens to our moral standing? We want, we want to have this global superpower image, but when, it, when we are tested, we stay away. So then it's shall not we easy, I agree. We are caught between no. a rock and a hard place, but surely no. it, there are times when you must stand up. Shall we tell Scholz not to send the weapons uh, to Ukraine? Shall we tell UK Johnson not to do that? Shall we tell uh, NATO countries not to send their forces to Romani Romania, uh, to the Baltic states? Uh, should we tell the United States not to send millions of dollars worth of arms, aid to... to uh, being out, why should we get into this game? Mm -hmm. Why should We have not started this war. We are not endorsing this war. We are not giving any particular comfort uh, to Russia. But if we can continue to condemn and criticize Russia, day after day when resolutions will be moved again and again mm -hmm. in the Security Council, in the UNGA, in the Human Rights Council and everything else. What will be the, what will be the consequence of this? Mm -hmm. We will earn the permanent hostility of Russia towards us. And, and it's not as if the United States and Europe or anybody else is going to come to our assistance mm -hmm. as they have not even come even now mm -hmm. when the China is sitting 50,000 troops on our border Mm -hmm. and uh, and encircling us through Pakistan and everything else. We have to fight this alone. Is so, there any guarantee that they will do it? So, they have not regarded our security at all by handing over, as I said, Afghanistan to the Taliban mm -hmm. uh, because 
this is going to increase radicalization and all those threats of terrorism in our region, but they've done it in their national interest. I have no quarrel with that because after 18 years, they wanted to withdraw fine, mm -hmm. but they didn't withdraw in consultation with us or taking into view our longer term security. So there has to be a balance of interest. Right. There is no reason why we should earn the make Russia an adversary unnecessarily, especially as we for the opposite reasons of what uh, Google has mentioned, right. that we want to make sure that China and Russia does not abandon us entirely in this triangular situation we have between Russia, India and China. I, we, we will lose all leverage in this, in this triangle and we'll be the sufferer and the United States and others in our, in our region in the, on the land. Right. We're not going to be able to substitute for, 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 for our security. Let if we have problems with, with Russia. So we have to take the entirety of our interests in mind and have a balanced position. In the United Nations Security Council in the last meeting, we have spoken about the UN Charter and integrity of countries and sovereignty of countries. If you read the text, the entire text is oriented But we abstained to, from the vote. We, no, no, we, we, there was but a lot we of, uh, we said but the we right abstained. words, but we abstained from voting and were eventually therefore on the same side as China and the United Arab, Arab Emirates. Yes, uh, but, but, but do you know even the UAE, which is so close to Britain, which has been so close to the West, yes. which has been so close to the United States, chose to abstain. Why do you think they chose to abstain? Despite the fact that they have such great dependency uh, mm -hmm. on the West. For India, look. United States can't tell us that since we have a problem with Russia, you treat Russia as uh, your enemy too. We can't do that. We I, want very good relations with the United States. We want to build them further, but not at the cost of our ties with Russia. Okay. Therefore, as a responsible power, we have to look after our interests and maintain a balance in, in our position. We have, as I said, no way endorse what Russia is doing. But why should we go out on a limb and keep criticizing Russia un, un, unnecessarily Let's, simply because the West wants it, simply because we are giving lectures that you look, you should look after your own interests as if we don't have the capacity to think for ourselves and look after our own interests. We have enough experience of international diplomacy to be able to do so. And tomorrow, let's say, if, if we have a problem with China and Russia actually stops, uh, stops sending su supplies, spare, spare parts and, and arms uh, 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 and other things that we need, what will happen? 50 to 60 percent of our armed forces are dependent on Russian equipment and material and support. Okay. We will be left I think, to virtually I th defenseless. I think you, you it's made very, your, very I important. think you made your point very strongly, Mr. Sibyl. You're very clear that this is not a war in which we should go out on a limb and take sides. Mr. Kugelman and KC Singh interestingly believe that there are issues in the national interest that demand that India take a more nuanced approach perhaps send out much stronger signals to Russia that what's happening on the ground is unacceptable. Two views, and we leave it to viewers to judge. Thank you both very much for joining me here on the news today.